Hi everyone. So I wanted to do something different today and I wanted to take you through the way that I have done visualization in the past. And I want to share a little bit before I get into it, how this has helped me. Um, whether or not you believe in manifestation or creating your own reality, whatever you want, however you want to think about it, neural retraining, um, thinking your reality into the present moment, um, all of these types of things, how your mind brings things to fruition. I have, I use this in my own recovery as well as prior to psychiatric drugs overcoming a pretty severe anxiety disorder as I've shared in other videos. Also when I was really struggling immensely with debt, which I've also shared before, I was consistently visualizing, scripting, doing all these things to try to bring about twenty five or sorry, twenty thousand dollars. And it was crazy because I was doing all of the mindset work and the visualization, which Olympic athletes do it. They focus on it in their mind and see themselves going through their routine or doing running their race or whatever they're doing over and over and over and over and over. Um, because your mind, your brain doesn't know the difference between what you're just visualizing and what's actually happening in reality. So they use this as a way to, as part of their training and it's very effective. And there's a lot of science behind it. And anyway, so I needed to bring about $20,000 and I used what I'm going to teach in this video or go through and it was crazy the way it happened out of the blue I got a message from a girl who I'd connected with through the diabetes online community and we had had a couple conversations here and there but I hadn't talked to her for an extended length period of time at this point and she randomly messages me and she's like hey have you ever heard about the Canada disability tax credit for type 1 diabetics and I'm like never heard of it so she goes into a little bit of detail about it and and um and so I look into it and she said you know I would recommend if you're going to apply for it to hire an advocate so I went through the whole process again setting my intentions keeping my intentions on twenty thousand dollars having no idea what this disability tax credit could even mean other than it it helps you it saves you money on your taxes so little did I know that as I went through this process, all of a sudden, you know, I get this letter saying that I had been approved for the disability tax credit and that I was going to be back paid in um, overpaid taxes, essentially, for 10 years previous. And it turned out to be 19000 and some dollars, so just under $20,000. Got it paid in a lump sum and it was like whoa it was just crazy the way it happened also um i used to do a lot of visualization and setting of intentions when i was in acute withdrawal and visualizing what i wanted my future to look like and things that i had always dreamed of that never really thought or seemed possible and actually for me having a baby was you know less than five percent chance because when i was doing this particular one i was well i encompassed several different things into this visualization that i'm talking about right now um it was healing from withdrawal it was having a baby a girl um naturally getting pregnant it was um money job career all those things and none of that was my reality i was on disability i was barely functioning i you know had no job had no man at the time no child n nothing in sight and i had a less than five percent chance of having a baby naturally because i was 39 and a half uh, many years of chronic disease and also had my hormones tested early in withdrawal and they were like undetectable my progesterone was undetectable which you need a pretty high decent amount of progesterone to carry a baby and so it was really low chances for me but I just set this intention and I did this visualizing and now I have my miracle baby and had a girl and um happened naturally and it's just incredible now when I go back and watch the videos that I made and and there's different ways of, of doing this. I have my own preferred way and I'll share with you in this video what I like to do. So in my experience, so those are just some of the main things. I mean, recovering from severe withdrawal symptoms, um, having a miracle baby and $20,000 lump sum, pretty significant things. And so I wanna share, and this, again, I've, I've mentioned part of the neural retraining programs like DNRS visualization is 
a huge part of it. And if you're someone who suffers from severe mental symptoms, um, whatever it might be that you feel like you're just unable to hold pictures in your mind, there's kind of different ways around that. The first one would be just start where you're at. So for me, I mean, I had severe, severe mental symptoms, but I did the visualization anyway, as best that I could. It's more about intention and emotion than it is about the pictures, although they can be really powerful as well. And I'll explain that more in a minute. If you feel like you can't, absolutely can't conjure up, even if you start with five seconds, it's better than nothing. And you build from there. Just, you've got to start somewhere. If you feel like you can't do any of it at all, there are other ways to do it. Um, one thing that I also did, uh, in addition to the visualizing as best I could, uh, but because I was so affected mentally, I also was doing scripting. So this could be um, writing a journal entry as if it is today's date, but it's actually more of what you want your future to look like than what the present reality is. So I would write things like, I'm so grateful for $20,000. It came out of nowhere. It you know, met all my needs as far as, you know, financially, I'm so grateful. And you can do that as well. But I want to focus on the visualization part. And the best way to do this, again, even if you're starting with very, very, very short amount of time, the best way to do this is to do it at night, when your body is naturally more relaxed, and I get relaxed is a relative term, when you're in withdrawal, because there's not a lot of relaxing. But typically, even in my coaching clients, people tend to be a little bit more at ease in the evenings. So if you can try to do this right before bed, and this is what I did every single night for months on end, um, it can be very powerful. And it also, it can really sink in to your subconscious mind more easily when you are relaxed and your brainwave state is more slowed down. So I'm not going to get into the whole like science of this or any of that, but I just wanted to share in as much detail as possible what I did and need to actually do again for other areas of my life and want to get back into. So do it in, at night when you're the more most relaxed typically. And you could do it sitting up, you can do it lying down, you can even do it walking, but it could be a little bit harder because typically you're going to want to have your eyes closed. So I would just do it laying down. I would, I actually had this whole routine that I would do before bed because it was so important to me um, to try to do anything I could to push myself towards recovery. So I would do this every night, um, laying down, sitting, however you can get comfortable, if you can get comfortable. And like I said, you could walk, but it's easier if you do it with your eyes closed. At least it was for me. So another thing that I did in addition to doing it at night was I had a playlist that I had created through YouTube where you could use like if you use Spotify or anything think of songs so songs are very powerful because oftentimes people will say it takes me right back you know when you hear a certain song they they evoke emotion um, a lot of times music can be very powerful emotionally so if you can think of a really really happy time in your life like maybe when you were in love maybe when you know your children were born or your children were young or just when you were at a really happy stage in your life maybe you were in college or it can be anything and think about your favorite songs at that time most people have um, like I said songs that will remind remind them of a good time in their life I mean songs can evoke negative emotions as well like it can remind you of a breakup or whatever but I'm talking about thinking about songs that when you hear them they remind you of a really good time in your life think of you know three or four for me I think I had five on mine and I had it I created a playlist on YouTube which was just free and I would play it as a loop um, or just so they would play in succession without me having to like push play and I would just lay in bed and I would close my eyes and play these songs. And what you want to do is you want to get into a feeling state. So you want to really elevate your emotion. Because I get that you feel really crappy in withdrawal. I mean, that's an understatement. And you may find it impossible to think positive. And this is much more than thinking positive. So think about, I almost feel like I should have music playing in the background. Um, but I'm just giving you kind of a starting point. Maybe, maybe it's not so much of a guided visualization as it is for step-by-step -step how to do it. Um, so have a playlist and lay down, sit down, walk, 
and listen to it and let it allow it to take you back to that time in your life and really get into it so as much as it can be impossible to think positive when you're feeling so bad the power of music you know like i said people say oh it takes me right back so allow yourself to go there in your mind think back to you know a time or you might not even have to think back the song might just it might just elevate your emotion automatically if it doesn't then just sit with the memory for me i got so good at this that i could just play the music and i would almost immediately have an elevated emotion but if it doesn't if you don't feel anything except it might just remind you of a memory then then listen to that song close your eyes and really get back to so whether it was a time when you were in love or like i mentioned before just a happy time in your life your children are young you were in college whatever it was and just pick a memory like a really vivid memory and um go there in your mind and just really like embody it think back to and this can be really emotional um but that that's actually a good thing and so the reason why you want to have songs that remind you of good things and positive times in your life is because you're trying to elevate your emotion you're trying to bring that back up that feeling in your body and so so do that so so sit with it and think back to how happy you were and, or how peaceful you felt or how in love you were and really feel that in your body um and it can be distracting i get if you have neurological symptoms other things but just 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 Sit, just be present with them but go to a place in your mind where you can really feel an elevated emotion and just let your mind take you there and really think about everything that you smelled heard um tasted if applicable saw um felt when you were in that good time in your life think about that and really get into it and allow yourself to cry allow yourself to feel that warm fuzzy feeling and this might sound really lame and out there but but allow yourself to go there once you're in that feeling that really positive feeling and it might take you a little while to get there that's why it, it, it this takes practice and the more you do it the quicker you can your your mind will will take you to that place or you, it'll take your body to that place so you want to get into it a real sometimes I would put my hand on my heart because I was really trying to like conjure up feelings of love feelings of how I used to feel um and so I, I, and then I, and then shift your thinking when, once you have that elevated feeling and you're like, you're feeling positive or you're really in the moment of that memory of when you were feeling well, and then shift your thinking and start visualizing your future and go into a lot of detail here. So if you were healed, what would you do? And literally start picture your entire day in detail, or even just a part of your day. Like maybe you have really difficult mornings now. Um, and so think about your mornings in detail. So if you were healed and I held a magic wand or snapped my fingers and you were recovered fully, what would you do on the first day of your recovery? And I want you to go there in your mind. So you have this elevated emotion, you have this music that makes you feel good. Now go there in your mind. Think about when you wake up, what is the first thing that you do? You know, it could be... I don't know, getting a cup of coffee, reading the newspaper, scrolling your phone, or just, you know, playing with your kids or just sitting out on the deck or whatever it might be. And think about the types of conversations you're having with people and really like let your senses like embrace all of that. You could, so for instance, if my dream morning would be, I go and just sit out on a patio, my patio, and I enjoy a cup of coffee, something that maybe you did before you were injured and felt so horrible and that you really loved, or maybe you took it for granted, but you still enjoyed it on some level. And then picture something like, here's what I would do. Your neighbor's walking by and says hello, and maybe it's someone that you know fairly well, and they come up to you and they say, hey, you know, hey, Melissa, how are you doing today? and you you tell them or they say what are you up to today and and imagine yourself actually having a conversation like you know i j and then just feel how happy you are and how much you love the taste of the coffee and how thankful you are that you can drink it again and you feel so well despite having caffeine and whatever you maybe haven't been able to do in real life up to this point and say you know i'm and and may maybe they're they're making comments like you look really well. Um, you know, how do you get yourself into such good shape? Or how do you, 
I don't know, like imagine you're having a conversation and someone is commenting on how good you look and you say, you know what, like I love my life. I have the most, and then just start listing it like you're having a conversation. I have the most wonderful family. I love where I live. I love my job. You know, I feel absolutely incredible. And then the neighbor would say, you know, you look incredible. What's your secret? And then you say, you know, I have so much gratitude. You know, I was the sickest I've ever been in my life a year ago. And now I'm just so grateful for being able to sit out here on the patio, drink my coffee and just take in the sights, the sounds of the birds, the sunset or the sunrise. Um, you know, I can hear my kids laughing in the house and, and then imagine like tears streaming down your face and you say, you know, I've recovered from the most difficult thing I've ever been through in my life and every day feels like a gift and this might sound cheesy to you but it's really powerful and I'll so that is just a hypothetical example so in my own here was what mine was like so I I had more well like okay so I my ultimate what I wanted more than anything was to recover but then I would let my mind go to if I fully recovered what would I do and how would I look how would I feel and so this is what it was for me I had this fantasy about like reuniting with my ex I had a fantasy um, you know I wanted to have a baby I wanted to become self-employed I wanted to travel I wanted to lose weight and get in shape and because I had been unable to exercise in my withdrawal and I wanted to I just fantasized about lifting weights again and getting fit and getting into shape and telling people about my recovery so part of my visualization was very vivid it was pulling up to my ex's driveway and he would he came out and I was wearing this like beautiful outfit and I just felt haggard when I was ill so this was like really powerful for me I had long black hair and if you've known anything about my history I had a setback from hair dye I used to have jet black hair for years and I had become so afraid of hair dye because of my setbacks and so in my video or sorry not video in my visualization I had this long black hair again because I had been able to dye it and I had no ill effects from it so I had this long black hair I had my old previous to antidepressants fit body I was wearing an outfit that made me feel good I had makeup on because for a long time I was afraid of makeup anything with chemicals anything toxic and so in my visualization I was able to do all this again um, and so he you know I was reuniting with him and he was like you look incredible and he would twirl me around on the driveway and be like wow I can't believe how amazing you look and then you know it, it would it would go from there and I would tell him about my successes and this I had no aspirations to be a coach or I had no idea what I was going to do um, I was on disability at the time but I wanted I knew that what I wanted was to be self-employed and make an impact and so I was telling him how you know I have this wonderful life where I make a really good income and I have no boss and no schedule and but I help people and I'm passionate about what I do and I make a difference in people's lives and and just you know, I would go into detail in my conversations with him in this visualization about, you know, how much I love my business and my life and, and he would comment on my looks and, and then I would cry in this visualization and be like, and I'm healed because in real life, he went through my first withdrawal with me and then we broke up and then I went through my second withdrawal when I was living at home with my mom, which was much worse. Um, and so I just envisioned telling him like, I'm healed. Like I never thought I have a clear head again. Um, I can think straight. I don't have intrusives. I never talked in the negative in my visualizations. It was always, my head is clear. Um, I, I'm in control of my thoughts. Um, and I, I'm crying in my visualization. And because of the emotion that I was feeling while doing this visualization and the music playing, I mean, I was actually crying as I was visualizing this. And that's what you want. Um, and it might sound really cheesy and really out there, but it's powerful, powerful stuff. Um, and another key to it is once you're done, like once you've went through this whole visualization, you know, do it for, you know, 20 minutes or so if you can, or just start really small, just do it for 30 seconds if that's all you can do. Do it consistently every day, twice a day, um, however often you can, and you really want to get into that. Um, and, and, and then you want to like kind of release it. So, 
it's not always about trying to fix, trying to fix, trying to fix. And I know we want to fix what's what's wrong because we feel so horrible. But a really important part of like um, visualization is intention. Like this is what I'm teaching my brain. And then my, my, my body will do the rest. And it's, it's a lot about trust and trusting the process. And I know that we've lost a lot of trust in this. Um, but it's really important. Once you're in that elevated state, it becomes much easier to be like, this is going to be my reality one day and I can't wait. And it, it really does work. And I don't want to get too like metaphysical or try to, I'm not trying to get spiritual. This is like part of neural retraining. And I shared in the last video or the one before that, where when I overcome or overcame my pretty severe anxiety disorder prior to drugs, one of the things that I did, I wasn't really aware of visualization then, but I was very conscious of how do I embody someone who's not anxious? What, how does that person dress? How do they think? How do they talk? How do they act? What do they do? And I tried to just do those, like even just watching people that I perceived as laid back, how do they stand? And I would start standing like them. And it's amazing how once you start doing that, it's like, it's like the other stuff follows. And I think we get into this mindset of, I'll only be happy when, or I'll only be not anxious when. Um, and so, and sometimes it can work in the reverse and where you're, you're acting as if, even though it's not happening yet, and your, your mind will start to follow. And this is a practice. It's not a one time and everything's fixed by any means. Um, but I just wanted to share that because again, it's been very powerful in my life, um, in getting through withdrawal and also in other areas of my life. Visualization is very powerful and I think we underestimate the power of our minds and our brains and how it, you know, what wires together, fires together, fires together, wires together, I said that backwards. Um, and it's, it's all, it's, it's amazing the shifts that can happen when we, um, change the way that we think and it's ugh, again it's not a mind over matter it's literally changing your brain incrementally step by step by step and getting this is where getting out of the forums is so important because I've said before I've seen how detrimental and experienced it both myself and when I'm coaching people and you know they'll say one comment that they read they read one comment on one youtube video and it spiraled them for days so if one one thought can have that much impact then in the other direction when you make a consistent practice it makes an impact in the other direction it's very it's very powerful and the more senses you can involve the better um, the more you can embody it and elevate your emotion the better and the more you can really get into that experience mentally i find that people in this community have very powerful imaginations because we're always catastrophizing we're imagining worst case scenario we're scaring ourselves constantly with our thoughts and that's not a conscious process a lot of the time like for me it was intrusive I wasn't choosing those thoughts they were just pummeling me like my brain so to like kind of fight back against it even though I was still experiencing the intrusive thoughts I was using the part of my brain that I still could still con could control which was where am I letting my mind go and that was all part of the process for me. So anyway, I don't want this to get too long. I hope you guys are doing okay. Let me know if you have any questions or comments on this. And I'll see you next time. Bye.